is that uh, someone will get a huge amount of data from a learning management system or some uh, other system. They will then analyse the data to try and work out how students learn. And they'll say, uh, uh, in this data, we found that the students went to this PDF first to look at the PDF. Then they went to the discussion forum to talk about the PDF. And then they did a quiz to test their knowledge. That might be what the, the data says. And if you go to the teacher of that course, the teacher will say, yes, that's what I told my students to do. And so all that the learning analytics has done is to rediscover what the teacher told the students to do in the first place. So this, I think, is one of the uh, challenges or problems for our early work in learning analytics, is that sometimes we'll do a lot of very complex data analysis only to discover what the teacher already knew, what the students already knew. I think learning design offers a very good solution for this problem. Because in learning design, we already have a description of the sequence of activities. And that description is in uh, technical terms. So we can do uh, computational analysis. We can have the computer analyze the, the student activity data using the structure that we already know from the sequence. So let me give you an example from LAMS, and in this I'm delighted that I can rely on Lewis's own work. Lewis has written a, a great paper about LAMS and learning analytics, and so I'd encourage you to look at that paper for more ideas on this. But this is an example from Lewis's paper, where we have a sequence of activities up the top, a number of tasks here, and so this can be used to understand where students are up to in the sequence. We can see uh, there's a student there, there's two students there, and there's another one there. So this is an example of real-time information about student progress through this sequence. And this is another a view of the sequence where we can see these are our four students doing it, and the blue circle is the tasks they have completed. The red dot is where they are up to now. The green one is the task they haven't got to yet. So you can see in our class, this student has gone furthest. This one is last. These ones are in the middle. So Lewis has pointed out how we can use this to see how groups of students are moving through a learning design. And he makes a number of other very good suggestions about further information that could be used to do deeper learning analytics in uh, this area of learning design. So I want to just briefly show you some new work we have done here and then offer some suggestions for the future. And uh, they include uh, tracking of time. So how much time are students spending on uh, each activity? And uh, what could be done with this? I should also point out that at the moment, there is the raw database within LAMS that you can do direct database analysis on. But in the future, it would be good for us to provide interfaces for LAMS. So a, another technical system, like an intelligent uh, engine, could query the data in LAMS to be able to then provide advice to a teacher. So I'll just briefly show you this. This is the new time-based tracking of students. And this green line here, this is the average amount of time for all students on a sequence. And the blue line is one individual student and how long they are taking. So this particular view allows the teacher to see that uh, all students are spending a certain amount of time on average on these tasks. This individual blue student is spending about the same amount of time but is a little bit slower than everyone else. That's what that example shows. A different example is, in this case, this is for one student and each of these is a different task that the student has done in the sequence. So we can see the students spend a lot of time on this task, but not very much time on this task or this task. So it gives us a way of mapping how much time across the sequence the student uh, spent. All right, so I think um, th these are only uh, brief concluding comments, but I think Within the field of uh, single learner learning analytics for individual students working through sequences, there is already quite a lot of literature on that. And uh, Sabine tomorrow will tell you more about 
uh, some of the work of thinking about different pathways for students, different student preferences and how they can be supported. So I won't say very much about that. My interest is more in the area of collaborative learning and learning analytics, which is quite a new field. There's very little work on it so far. But I think some of the things we could uh, imagine uh, looking at would be things like if we have a quiz at the end of a sequence, we could compare the quiz scores to how much activity students had in their discussion forums. Our students who spend more time in the discussion forum getting higher marks on their quizzes or not? This is a question we could ask. We could look at perhaps uh, an example where if students were giving ratings to each other's discussion forum postings. So students said, oh, this is a very good discussion posting and this one's not so good. Then how does that compare to the amount of time that students spend in the forum? Does a student who spends a lot of time in the discussion forum get very good comments from their peers or, or maybe not? Is there a connection between students' um, comments on each other's you know, commentary and the amount of time taken? Another thing we could look at in the future would be for some students they might go through the sequence in a linear way. Others it might be more like a cycle. They go through part of the sequence, then they go back to an earlier task and do it again. Maybe then they go back again and then go on. So do students who have more of a cycle approach to the sequence, do they learn better than those who just go straight through in a the line? These are some of the questions I think we could start to investigate at the connection between learning design and learning analytics when they come together. All right, let me conclude. I think that learning design is a field of road from new ideas both in the technical area about gaps in learning objects and learning management systems, but also some new ideas in pedagogy, the idea of the pedagogical meta model. From there, in the recent work on the Larnaca Declaration, we've tried to clarify this into three major ideas, the framework, the wider conceptual map, and the process of learning design, the way that teachers do it in practice. LAMS, as my own work, and other systems like Copper Core are examples of ways to uh, implement learning design in online environments, or a mixture. You might have some activities online and some activities face-to-face -face in the classroom. So it's a, a blended learning example. And then finally, I think there is a lot of potential in the future for learning analytics and learning design to work together, because learning design brings some new ideas to help learning analytics to be more precise, to be more careful in what it can analyse, and also new ideas about, say, collaborative learning and learning analytics. So with that, I might uh, conclude. Thank you, Louise. Okay. Thank you. Maybe two, one or two questions now. Una o dos preguntas y después podemos a la gente que esté más interesada nos vamos a algún C a conversar con con qué. ¿Alguna pregunta? I think the, the, the analogy with music is very powerful. It says that at the moment, you see, uh, or you think that we cannot fully describe learning or, or, or learning design with this uh, notation. What do you think are the main parts that are missing? What are the big kind of still that not described with, with, with the current notation of learning design? Yes. I think um, some of the areas that are, are weak in learning design are the live interactions between students in, and teachers in the classroom. And the, the skill that some teachers have to very carefully understand where their students are at and how they might change their class in the moment. You know, I think, oh, this, this teaching idea is not working. I need to do something different. And they change their mind and they immediately do something different. This, I think, is a very important part of teaching, but it is hard to bring into learning design. So I think that is one particularly challenging area uh, to think about for the future. As it turns out, that same problem exists in music, though. In uh, jazz, the musicians improvise. They invent the music as they play it. And so we at least have an example in music of the same kind of problem of how to think about uh, that. So we need a lot more work in that field. It's still a challenging problem, but that would be probably the biggest one I think to look more at. Thank you. Okay.
una tenía, tenía nada de colchón. Ok, entonces concluimos y. <laughs> ok, <laughs> Sabine, please. Um, I found it all really interesting. Uh, one, one thing that I thought when, when you talk about patterns was what came to mind was the software design patterns. Yes. So, did you think, or what do you think about the relations between the software engineering and the software design patterns and the learning design and patterns in learning design? I think software engineering in terms is a little bit. Uh, older um, area than learning design. Yes. I think there are some things that they do in, in software design patterns which might be uh, might give you some ideas on, on where uh, learning design and learning design patterns so how, how do you see those Thank you. Yes, I agree. I think um, uh, patterns in software and also in, in earlier areas. Patterns originally came from architecture from the work of Chris Alexander in the 70s, and that then influenced software, which then influenced learning design. So I think um, software and, and other areas could help us. The one that I particularly like is in, say, uh, the unified modelling language. There are multiple visualisations for the one software. You know, there's the sequence diagram, class diagram. So I sometimes think that when we look at learning design, it's not that we need one diagram. Maybe we need several different diagrams like UML. So um, we don't know yet quite what that is, but I take inspiration from software patterns for exactly that kind of reason. Okay. Uh, James will be with us during the morning for any questions or consultation. James will be, will be with us during this morning, so if you have any other questions, please call them. del señor James Darcy, profesor de tecnologías de aprendizaje y director del centro e-learning de excelencia McQuarrie. Antes de concluir, les queremos avisar que el cóctel de inauguración se realizará el día de hoy a las seis y media en los jardines de este edificio y el día viernes, al finalizar la sesión de la mañana, alrededor de las una y media de la tarde, se realizará un almuerzo en el barco Calle Calle con un tour a la península San Ramón. Por su asistencia, muchas gracias y buenos días.